good morning on this Easter morning. We just give God the praise, the honor, and the glory. This is the day when we recognize and realize and celebrate the fact that Jesus got up with all power in his hands. We will have the call of worship at this point. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us. And we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. This is the day. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. He is not dead. He is risen. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for this Resurrection Sunday. We thank you that Jesus got up with all power in his hands. God, you've been so very good to us. And we thank you, God, for sending your son to suffer, bleed, and die for our sins. And we thank you for how you rose him on the third day with all power in his hands. We praise you on this day and every day as we celebrate your resurrection. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Mm -hmm. Have your way in this worship service right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have a selection by Brother Lloyd Woods, Jr. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes it feels cold and you feel alone. Hold on, better days are coming. It can be rough in this world. I know it ain't easy, but hang on in there. I know better days are coming. You seem good, you seem bad, you've been happy and sad. But just remember. Better days, better days are coming. Friends will leave you all by yourself. Hallelujah. Don't you cry, cause better days are coming. Thank you, Lord. Better days. Better days. Better days are coming. It's only a season for what you're going through. Stay focused, never, never lose sight. Hallelujah. I know people, people. They don't see the hurt you feel inside. But keep on smiling. 
because everything will be all right. Oh, 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 oh. fitting word for this resurrection day. Mm -hmm. We're in the midst of a crisis, but as the psalmist said, mm -hmm. better days yeah. are coming. I just wanted to welcome you all to our broadcast and just to just say today is a day of celebration. We know that after Good Friday, after the crucifixion, this is the day yes. when we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord that he got up with all power in his hands. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to have my wife give us a few announcements, and then I will come back um, right after that, and we'll, I'll give you the word um, for this Resurrection Amen. Sunday. As always, there is a word yes. from the Lord. Amen. Good morning, my Jerusalem family. Good morning to those who are viewing through Facebook and through Zoom. Happy Easter to everyone. Our announcements for today are as follows. We are continuing to pray for our sick and shut-in members. Also, we would like to extend sympathy to the Lomax family in the home going of Frank Lomax Sr. Church body, please be reminded that due to the current crisis, funerals and weddings will be greatly modified. Funerals will be limited to a few family members at a great site service. And please be aware that this guidance may change. The pastor's anniversary committee is still taking t-shirt orders. Please contact a member of the committee to place your order. You may contact either Virginia Hope at 338-9079, Terry Jackson at 363-9455, or Sandra Spady at 304-4452. Also, please be reminded that Bible study will be Wednesdays via Zoom at noon and 7 p.m. We are in the book of Acts chapter 28 this week. Additionally, Sunday school and Sunday service will remain at 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. respectively via Zoom and Facebook Live. For all meetings, you will continue to receive a message invite. However, the log on and dial in information will remain the same. Please be reminded that you may still send your tithes and offerings to the church via Giveify. You may also send your tithes and offerings into the newly established P.O. Box. That P.O. Box is P.O. Box 246, Oilville, Virginia, 23129. Lastly, JVC family, please be sure to refer to the CDC guidelines for your safe, safety and health. 
Members who need assistance with anything, please do not hesitate to contact Pastor Harris or any member of Jerusalem via phone or email. And those are our announcements for today. Happy Resurrection Day to everyone. Amen. Praise God to my wife and her assistance during this season. And praise God for those announcements. Um, we know that we serve a mighty good God who is still in charge. Um, I just wanted to um, just say before I get into the word for today um, that we just praise God for everyone who's on the call, who's viewing through um, Zoom, who's called in, who's dialed in, who's looking at Facebook Live. Um, we just thank you for um, just supporting your church during the season. And we just want to ensure that the word still goes forth. Amen. So Amen. with all hearts and minds are clear, I'm just going to have a word of prayer. I'm, actually, I'm going to read the scripture. And then we will um, move on with the service in terms of the preached word. As I thought about a fitting word for today, um, this is the scripture. These are the scriptures that came to me. Um, it's actually Matthew chapter number 27, verses 50 through 54. Um, also, um, verses 62 through 66. And then Matthew 28, 5 through 10. I won't read all of this, um, but I just wanted to read a few verses in your hearing and this message is titled after this we were never the same after this we were never the same then jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last at that moment the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom the earth shook and the rocks were split the tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised after his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when Jesus, now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what had taken place, they were terrified and they said, truly this man was God's son. Mm -hmm. Verse 62, the next day, that is the day after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, sir, we remember what the imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. And then chapter 28 of Matthew, Starting verse five. But the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead. And indeed he's, a go he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. I'd like to use for a subject this morning. After this, we were never the same. After this, we were never the same. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for your word. Lord God, we pray that this word would not fall on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. But I pray, Lord, that you would just bless us in a mighty way. Speak to us and speak through us, God, as your servants. I pray that you give me a word from on high. And I pray, Lord God, that, you, that, that the Holy Spirit would speak through me and that I would not be speaking. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God fall fresh on us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And the saints of God say, amen. amen. After this, mm -hmm. we, were, we were never the same. Sometimes we're in the midst of a trial or tribulation. And in the midst of it all, we can't 
understand or even imagine what it's going to be like to be on the other side of the tribulation. But I would contend the day will come when we will look back on this season in our life. Mm -hmm. And we will look back on this time and we will say, after this, we were never the same. In life, there are times when events occur that shock us, overwhelm us, change the world, and alter our reality forever. Just looking at the 20th and 21st centuries, these are a few events that have occurred. From 1914 to 1918, more than 100 countries from Africa, the Americas, Asia, Australia, and Europe were involved in World War I a conflict that claimed 20 million lives. From 1929 to 1939, the United States experienced the worst economic downturn in the history of the industrialized world, the Great Depression. In 1931, the Yellow River flooded in China, killing 4 million people. From 1939 to 1945, the world was added again as over 30 countries were involved in World War II, this time killing 75 million people, 40 million of which were civilians. From 1954 to, through 1968, the United States had its own civil rights struggle, which ended shortly after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. From 1961 to 1965, 58,000 Americans died in the Vietnam War. In 2001, the 21st century, 3,000 people died in the 9-11 terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center, which took place in New York City, New York. In 2004, a tsunami from the Indian Ocean with waves traveling, with waves, with waves traveling 500 miles per hour swept across 14 countries, killing over 200,000 people and leaving several hundreds of thousands more homeless. In 2010, over 200,000 people died in a Haitian earthquake, not to mention numerous others who lost everything. Church, there are times when events occur that overtake us, overwhelm us, and these events just blow our minds. Mm -hmm. And if we are honest, when we're reflecting on what happened at this season, we will say that after we get through this, after this, I was not the same. And your this doesn't have to be a world war. Your this doesn't have to be a national crisis. It can be a personal crisis, such as a betrayal, a job loss, a relationship loss, a divorce, a sickness, a disease, or the death of a loved one. Your this can be something very personal to you. Nevertheless, the point is that after that, what happened at this moment in your life, altered your reality and changed you forever. Mm -hmm. The point is that after you experienced this, you were never the same. Mm -hmm. How fitting it is to have this conversation on Easter or Resurrection Sunday, when Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died with the whole world watching only for the world to discover on resurrection morning that God raised Jesus from the dead. After this church, the people of God were never the same. And here's the point. When you go through this, it will alter you. When you go through this, it will change you. When you go through this, it's going to mess with you and it's going to change you. But will it change you for the better or will it change you for the worse? In the focal text for this morning, we will see the reaction of different groups of people, the reaction from the centurion, the reaction from the Pharisees and the chief priests, and the reaction from the disciples slash believers. First, to grow from this, you have to acknowledge that something has happened. The focal text for this Easter morning begin with Jesus crying out, with a loud voice and breathing his last breath in Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. Simply stated, Jesus died. And before he dies in Matthew's account or Matthew's gospel, Jesus dies questioning why the Lord 
has forsaken him. Matthew's gospel doesn't end with Jesus giving an assurance of faith, right? Declaration of God's work being finished or a committal of his spirit into his father's hands. Matthew's ending of Jesus' life is not that neat. Matthew's gospel ends with Jesus questioning why the Lord has forsaken him and left him in the final moments of his earthly life. And I know that some people say that Jesus was just quoting the Psalms and he didn't feel forsaken. But let's not get into a debate about what Jesus felt because the reality is we aren't Jesus and we're not the ones on the cross. If, but if we're honest with ourselves, some days of our Christian journey, we end with questions instead of statements of faith. Some days we feel forsaken. Some days we feel all alone. Some days we feel like Jesus felt. Some days we feel like the Lord is silent or even absent. Mm -hmm. Praise God that Jesus was honest enough mm -hmm. to express how he truly felt and not what we thought he was supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. Because like it or not, this injustice did occur. The lies happened. The betrayal of a disciple in his inner court happened. Mm -hmm. The abuse happened. The floggings, the whippings, and the beatings happened. The spitting in his face happened. The mocking and the thorns being pressed into his flesh, into his head, all happened. The murder of an innocent man. The crucifixion of God's only begotten son. The nails in the hands of Jesus and the feet of Jesus, all happened. But that's not all that happened when Jesus died. I found that when you go through stuff, you can just focus on the pain, but, but that's not all that happened when you read this text. Because if you look at verses 51 through 54, something else happened. At the moment when Jesus died, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks were split, the tombs were opened, and many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Mm -hmm. After his resurrection, the text says that they came out of the tombs and they entered the holy city and they appeared to many. They let the world know that Jesus is not the only one who was resurrected. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw this, when they saw the earthquake, when they saw what took place, they were terrified and they said, truly, this man was God's son. Amen. Or in the words of D from what's happened, when they saw this devastation, when they saw the earthquake and the rock split, they said, ooh, you're going to get it now. The curtain in the temple that separated the inner court from the outer court. The curtain in the temple that separated the place where the Ark of the Covenant was from the holy place where the priests were, was torn because Jesus, the Passover lamb, mm -hmm. gave us access to God's throne once and for all mm -hmm. with his own blood. Jesus died mm -hmm. as the supreme sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Now in the gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he dies on Passover. In the Gospel of John, he dies a day before Passover. But make no mistake about it, Jesus is the Paschal, the Passover lamb. And if you ask the centurion and those who were guarding Jesus' body when the earthquake occurred, if you ask them how they felt, they would tell you that after this, something happened. And they were never the same. If you ask those who were resurrected in their tombs, awakened from their resting place, and those who saw them in the holy city after Jesus' resurrection, they would tell you that after we saw this and witnessed the resurrected walking around, we were never the same. The trauma was real. The betrayal was real. The crucifixion was real. But God is also real. In other words, we will always have wars. We will always have the poor with us. We will always have accidents, epidemics, and natural disaster after natural disaster. But just know that if you're faithful unto death, God will give you the crown of life. Whatever trials come your way, just know that God is greater than every trial, than every tribulation. And after we understand this, 
we will never be the same. Second and final, and I'm done. To grow from this, you have to recognize the effect of the presence and the power. By this point in the text, it is obvious that something mighty and earth shattering has occurred. So much so that this story will be told over and over again for 2,000 years. In fact, every Christian sermon all over the world for the next 2,000 years will somehow deal with or talk about the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But all the Pharisees, the chief priests, and Pilate want to do is to discredit, deny, and stop the occurrence of something mighty, glorious, and divine. All they want to do is stay in denial as though nothing has really happened. They want to pretend that, that nothing of significance has occurred. So in verses 62 through 66, the enemies come together and they conspire. How can we deny and discredit and deny what God has done right here? How can we negate the death of the Son of God on the cross? How can we pretend like this didn't happen? In verses 62 through 66, Jesus, they say to Pilate in verse 63, Sir, we remember what the imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, he said, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate gives them permission to seal the stone. Isn't it funny, the people who are trying to conjure up deception, mm -hmm are calling the resurrection a deception. You won't get in trouble when you talk about the death of Jesus. You can go in the world and tell everybody that Jesus died. You won't get any argument, but when you start, start talking about how the Lord raised him from the grave, that's when the battle starts. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees and the chief priests say in verse 63, that Jesus says after three days, but if you read Matthew 16, 21, in Matthew 17, 23, the New Revised Version says, translate Jesus' words as on the third day. The King James Version says the third day. The Good News Translation says three days later. The NIV says on the third day. Well, on after three days later, despite their stone stealing, despite their stone stealing, by the time Mary Magdalene and the other Mary get to the tomb, we discover the tomb is empty. Let me say it like this. Jesus wasn't where the devil left him. He was where God brought him. And some of us can testify that we're not where the devil left us. We're where God brought us. The devil left us beaten and bruised and, and bloody. But in the tomb, somebody showed up. In the tomb, we got power from on high. And we're not where the devil left us. We're where God brought us. The two Marys expect to find the beaten body of Jesus. But what Mary Magdalene and the other Mary get in, in chapter 28, verses 5 through 7, is a prophetic announcement, a command for these women to preach, and a promise of Jesus' presence and power. The angel says to the woman, do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised, just like he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead. 
and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. Can I say it like this? The angel said, then go tell his disciples, go preach to them that he's not dead, but he's been raised from the grave. And the woman, Mary and Mary, go in accordance with God's command to preach to the disciples, to let them know that he's not dead. He has been raised and on their way to preach preach they run into the resurrected Jesus and after this they were never the same on this Easter morning I don't know all of your trials on this Easter morning. I don't know all of your tribulations on this Easter morning. I don't know what trouble is coming your way. But what I do know is that if you meet the resurrected Lord in the midst of your crisis, when God shows up, God will show out and you will never be the same. You will look back over your life and you'll say, that's the point when God showed up. That's when God gave me power. That's when God gave me my second win. That's when the Holy Ghost took control, and I am not the same. Amen. Yes, they hung him high. Mm -hmm. Yes, they stretched him wide. Mm -hmm. Yes, they put nails in his hands and nails in his feet. Yes, he died. But on the third day after all this, yes, yes. Jesus got up mm -hmm. with all power in his hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After this, the disciples couldn't stop praising God's name. After this, the disciples, you and I, had unspeakable joy. After this, no matter what came our way, no, no, not height, nor depth, not, no, not things present, nor things to come, we understood that nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. After this, we we trusted God no matter what because we knew that if Jesus Christ can look death in the eye and get up with all power in his hands, nothing can come our way to stop us. We have power and the victory is ours. After this story, we were never the same. Can I, can anyone testify who's watching on Facebook? Can anyone testify who's hearing on the call that ever since Jesus Christ came into my life, I have never been the same. Happy Easter, church. May the Lord bless you real good. Just before we have another song, I just want to give you an opportunity. Whenever the word goes forth, mm -hmm. it's never for entertainment or more fashion. But it's so you may be saved. Mm -hmm. The word is clear. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall, you will be saved. Mm -hmm. So if you're not saved, if you're watching, viewing, repeat these words after me. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. I believe that he died and rose on the third day with all power in his hands. Mm -hmm. Victory is mine. Mm -hmm. Shall we pray? Thank you. Mm -hmm. God, we thank you for the word. Mm -hmm. May it fall on fertile ground. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. At this time, we'll have another selection by Lord Woods, Jr. The blood that Jesus shed for me way Calvary, the blood that gives me my strength from day to day, it will never lose its power, for it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows through the lowest valley. Oh, yes, the blood that gives me my strength from day to day. It will never lose his power. The blood that Jesus 
to save for me. Way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me my strength from day to day. It will never lose his power, for it reaches to the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley, oh yes, the blood. That gives me my strength from day to day. It will never lose. It will never, never lose. It will never lose his power. Amen. The blood will never lose its power. Mm -hmm. Praise God for that wonderful selection from Brother Woods and for letting the Lord use him and exercising his gift. Mm -hmm. We're about to log out and leave this place. And, but we just want to encourage you that we know that we are in a time of crisis. But just know that we will get through this. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look back on this mm -hmm. and say, after this, yes. I was not the same. Mm -hmm. The Lord just showed me how much power he has. Mm -hmm. After this, mm -hmm. we will never be the same. In Jesus' name. If our hearts and minds are clear, mm -hmm. just before we have the closing prayer, I want to encourage you to share the service on Facebook Live. Um, I want to encourage you to join us on Wednesday at noon and 7 p.m. for Bible study. Um, but most of all, just tell somebody the good news on this Amen. Easter day. Amen. That Jesus got up Amen. with all power in his hands. And when he resurrected Jesus, he resurrected all of us. Amen. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for what you have done. We know that we're living in perilous times, but we know that you're also a God who has all power in your hand. We trust you, God, just like we always have. We know, God, that you can do great and marvelous things, and we know that you have us in the palm of your hand right now. Lord, strengthen us, encourage us, mm -hmm. and use us mm -hmm. to spread your word each and every day. After this, mm -hmm. we will never be the same. Mm -hmm. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us fathers before the presence of his glory with the exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And the church says, amen. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Go in peace. After this, mm -hmm. you will never be the same. Amen. I love you. May God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you.